morning, good morning, guys. Great, so to all of you, great presentations. Thank you very much, I learned a lot. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, with that said, I would like to start with, with, with Karen. Good morning. So uh, in your presentations, uh, it was uh, very impressive that you talk about all the different uh, technologies that have been developed here in Israel, from 8088 to Centrino, to the multi-core architecture, to now the hybrid architecture. Uh, with that said in mind, uh, what makes Israel culture or engineer so innovative, so creative? So kind of what is the, the secret for success here? I would focus on two items. One, I think a key attribute of the culture, the local culture, is embracing failures. And to me, experiments and risk-taking are really key in driving innovation. So I would say that's one element. The other element is the, um, the strong interconnections we have among people. This, I would say, probably number one of the secret sauce we have in, um, in Intel Israel is really the ability, because of those interconnections, to work as one team, to collaborate seamlessly across multiple organizations with the goal, clear goal to deliver the best leadership product. That's great. Thank you. Uh, now let me turn over to Shlomit. Uh, good morning, Shlomit. And congratulations again on your new, new role. Thank you. Uh, now in this new position, new responsibilities that you've got, what is your vision now? What is the vision that you want, that we'd like to share, that we'd like to impair to, to the rest? Really, when I think about the EG, uh, maybe I have two definitions what is a good EG organization. Part one of the definition is if every business unit at Intel would like DEG to build their product, it means we are building excellent products. And then if every excellent engineer anywhere else wants to join and be part of DEG, it means we have an excellent group. Great, thank you, thank you very much. Now, uh, I'm gonna ask a, a, a follow-up question. Uh, so we know that Sapphire Rapids has hit a launch delay. So with that in mind, uh, what are we doing to make sure that our products are released in a predictable cadence? To guarantee the predictability and the delivery of a product includes many, many steps from early stages of defining the right product, defining the complexity, really evaluating the complexity relative to the timeline we allocate to the product and executing to this plan. And we still have some misses on the way that we need to address and go and continue to improve. Thank you, thank you very much, that's great. Uh, Isai, nice to see you. Now with the 13th generation we see, which is Raptor Lake, we see that Raptor Lake's performance, it's a lot, uh, it's higher than Alder Lake, even though they are in the same process technology and the same architecture. So, so what, what's the secret for, for that performance? So when we try to do a bottom-up planning, okay, we went up and said, what is the best that we can do with the amount of resources and with the schedule that we have? And we ended up with trying to do 7 to 10% of ST performance, which was good if you don't do change the architecture, and about 16 to 20, okay, of multi-cores. Now, just uh, some explanations why we came up to this one. Alderlec was 8P cores, which each one of those have two thread, right? 16 threads plus 8 E cores that have one thread each, which is 24 overall. We added to Raptor like another eight efficient core, which is 32. 32 over 24 is 30%. With the efficiency of having you know, more cores, okay, you don't get the theoretical improvement of performance. So we ended up with 16 to 20, and this was really a very good and challenging target. And what I remember eight months ago, we went to management and says, no, no, we don't have 16 to 20. It's really 25 to 35 on empty. I will give the empty story. And then two months ago, we say, no, no, it's not 25 to 35. It's really 35 to 40. And on the week of PV, we go to 41. And doing it on the same architecture, on the same process, this is, in my view, a miracle. Thank you so much, Isaac. Appreciate it. Uh, now, Ren, why are we betting on hybrid? This is such a big inflection point when it comes to architecture, when it comes to Intel. The future is allowing a best solution to each workload. It's not one size fits all anymore, but for each workload to have the best solution. If it's very high performing workload like gaming or other stuff, we have the performance score. If it's a very scalable workload like content creation, or other workloads that are scaling with the number of threads, uh, we have the efficient core or mix between the performance cores and the efficient core. And in the future, we, you will see more usages of uh, per workload acceleration. With Raptor Lake, 
uh, you are seeing the greatness of this uh, architecture. As uh, Isaac alluded, uh, we are doing in the same, almost the same process, same architecture, 40% multi-thread performance scaling, and this cannot be achieved without a hybrid architecture. Uh, one other note uh, to make, uh, this uh, separation between the two different type of cores also unleash the core from constraints that uh, the core has today, and future cores will be able to better optimize using this technology in mind. Thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, I think those were all the questions I have for today, so I'd like to thank Shulmi, uh, Karen, Isaac, and Ryan for being here with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the amazing presentations, for the hospitality, and putting this great event. I know you guys have a lot of surprises in the next couple of days that uh, I think everybody's going to enjoy here. I I've enjoyed a lot. I've learned a lot, so I really appreciate it. I'd love for you guys to give a round of applause to here to our panelists. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>